time. We thank you all so much for joining us on today. Our praise and worship song for this morning is What a Mighty God We Serve.
no doubt about it. His name, his name is, is Jesus. Yes, you ought to love him way down, deep down, deep down in your own. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God for another privilege. I'm telling you, this is another privilege. I said, this is another privilege. We are not deserving. It's a privilege just to be here. And being able to sing unto the Lord. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you, Jesus. And it's not a shallow love. It's deep down. Deep down, deep down. In my heart, hallelujah right. to the Lord. We serve the awesome God who is worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Thank God for another purpose. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Let me call your attention. St. Matthew in the New Testament. St. Matthew chapter 5. In the New Testament, if you move from Malachi over one book into the New Testament, you will find, you will find, you will find Matthew. St. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. My records show that the last time I embarked upon these verses was 2015. And I believe God has much to say still. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. When you found me, you discovered these words. You are the light of the world. Mm. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do you, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Mm -hmm. Let your light so shine before men mm -hmm. that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I want to talk about let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All right. Let it shine. 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 Yes, sir. The hymnologist would tell us today that we have a light within us. Yes, sir. And the hymnologist would tell us today. This little light of mine, yes, sir. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Yes, sir. And then the hypnologist would tell us everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Then he begins to get personal and he says, All in my home. Yes, sir. All right, now. I'm going to let it shine. Yes, okay. In my neighborhood, All right. I'm going to let it shine. Yes, Lord. He makes another round and he says, This little light of mine, yes, Lord. let it shine. Let it shine. Yes, let it shine. Yes, let it shine. I hear you, Pastor. This ought to be the testimony mm -hmm. of every blood, blood brought Christian. Every person who calls themselves Christ. All right. Every person who calls themselves Jesus type. Mm -hmm. Every person that calls themselves Christ like. All yes, right. it ought to be your testimony. Mm -hmm. That I have a light in me. And this little light may not be much of a light. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. But this little light of mine, right. I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it shine. The hypnologist says to us this morning that we can't make it shine. Well, we, have to let it shine. we just have to let it shine. All right, now. All right. The hypnologist says to us this morning 
It's not other folks' life that you need to be concerned about. All right. It is your life That's right. that you need to concentrate on. Amen. And if that light is in you, you need to let it shine. Yes. Let it shine. Yes. Let, let it shine. shine. Yes. So he says to us this morning, this little light of mine, yes, we ought to let it shine. All right. You see, the song didn't have a contemporary beat, mm -hmm. but it had a great message that we have left alone in the 21st century. Right. It didn't have too much of a message that you can get up and do your dance to. Mm -hmm. But the message is straight from the word of God. Yeah. Because you're saved, yeah. because you are born again, mm -hmm. somebody is seeing you. Mm -hmm. Someone is watching you. Yes. And you have a light that they need to see. Hypnologists would tell us today, just as Jesus will in Matthew chapter 5. He says, this little light of mine, you ought to let it shine. All right. Let it shine. Yes. Jesus is on his rant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Many would call it a rant because he preached a long sermon. Mm -hmm. All the way from Matthew chapter 5 to Matthew chapter 7, he talks on this one message on the Sermon on the Mount. Somebody in this room, somebody just listening to us this morning couldn't have been there while Jesus was preaching mm -hmm. because they would have been looking at the clock. I wonder what time is he going to be through? <laughs> Why is he talking so long? He's dealing with the B attitudes and he's dealing with what the promises of God are with us. He said, blessed are the poor, blessed are the poor for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. He says, blessed are those who moan, for they shall be comforted. All right. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And then he says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revive you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. He says rejoice when they misuse you and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven, for they persecuted so the prophets of old. And he comes back and he talks about two great analogies. The first one he talks about is salt. He says, you are the salt of the earth. And because of your testimony, because of your life that you are living, your saltiness will make other folks thirsty for the will of God. When people, when people see you, how you live. When people see how you forgive. When people see how you live your life from day to day, they will become salty for the word of God and salty for God himself. In other words, this saltiness will give a thirstiness about them so much so until they will seek out God. He goes on to say, even though you are Christians, even though you are of Christ, even though you are Christians, even though you love the Lord, you can lose your savor. And once you lose your savor, once you lose your testimony, your salt is not good for anything but to be trampled among men. Men will walk upon it. It will be good for nothing. It reminds us, this reminds us that our testimony, our livelihood, and the way we live makes a difference to other people. So the things you get into, the things that come out about you, the things that are true about you, it makes a difference to the way other people see God. He says, don't lose your saltiness. And he talks about this other analogy of being a light. He says, let your light so shine 
among men that they may see your good works with the ultimate goal of glorifying your Father which is in heaven. <coughs> Here lately, Aaron Jackson represented the great United States of America in the Winter Olympics. Aaron Jackson represented the United States in the Winter Olympics in the 500 meter speed skating. <coughs> this second time Olympian took gold. She became the first African American, the first black person, the first person of color to win this gold medal. The first woman to make a big difference on the ice. Let me tell you, I'm still struggling with roller skates <laughs> on a polished floor. But, but Aaron Jackson took it on the ice. She became the first woman to be recognized and the first American since 1994 to even win a medal in this sport. You see, she had a lot of things going against her. Lost her mama before high school graduation. Her mama wasn't there to watch her go through, through the graduation process. But she had a goal in mind is to not only perform well on the ice, but also to perform well in school. Right. So here she is pursuing her degrees in the midst of training for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. She gives credit to her almighty God, right. being reared and raised in a Christian academy, right. being reared and raised in a Christian school, she gives credit to the Almighty God. And she gives credit to the fact that her mama pushed her. Mm -hmm. She says her daddy, her daddy agrees that, that she was, he was a little laid back. Mm -hmm. But her mom pushed her. At the age of 10 months, she was on, on the stage doing pageantries. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that Aaron ain't bright skin. Matter of fact, she is jet black. Yeah. I mean, matter of fact, she is black as tall black. Mm -hmm. So when she says to us this morning, young girl and young boy, it doesn't matter of your skin color. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter of your race. Uh -huh. God can use you to do great things. All right. because she could not afford to get her heart rate up because if she got her heart rate up it would affect her eye negatively so she couldn't train like others train she couldn't train heavy and hard but she still is the gold medal winner she had some things stacked against her uh, she, 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 she had to train or lack of training in the midst of COVID-19 when things were shut down, she said, oh, it'll be passing in a few days. And then she says, when I got to the fifth shutdown, mm -hmm. she began to take this thing seriously and began to wonder if she would ever be able to get on the ice. Mm -hmm. She had to struggle through some things. Mm -hmm. All right. And then when she was growing up uh, in Florida, they didn't have a whole lot of ice skating rings. Because ice melts, ice, ice melt, regardless of how deep freezing you have. So they, they don't have a lot of ice skating rings. So with all these things stacked against her, she still is pursuing her education. And she still is winning gold medals in the Olympics. What's your problem? What's the issue with you? What is it? What is it with you that's holding you back? Mm -hmm. What is it with you that, that don't let you meet your goal and your New Year's resolution every year? Mm -hmm. All right. 
At the age of 29, when others are retiring from the sport, she wins a gold medal. She becomes the first black woman to medal in speed skating. You know, because we don't do a whole lot of speed skating practicing and stuff like that. Because in my neighborhood, I fell one time on a roller skate. And I'm done. I'm, it's over for me. Baseball, all day long. But skating, when I, when I got to control myself by a little bit of round break on the front of it, in an ice skating, you don't even have that break. She was involved in pageants. Her mom put her in stuff from the age of 10 months so she could recognize her gift from the Lord. Stop letting children tell you what they don't want to do because they don't know what they want to do. They don't know what God has placed in them. They don't know what God has for them. That's why parents are on the scene to show them where they need to walk and where they need to go. She, she lives behind a philosophy and she quotes her coach in this philosophy and it is, it is never too late to start your impossible plight. It is never too late to start the impossible. No, don't think that you're so old until the impossible can take place. Don't, don't think that God is not moving and he's working behind the scenes because God wants to use you to do something that other folk can't do. When Florence Griffin Journey won her race, no one had done that speed before. And they had come to the conclusion that no one could run this distant, this fast, under 11 seconds. But once Florence Griffin Journey did, other folk came to the conclusion that it can be done. People have to understand really well that God is working with them regardless of what disadvantage you're facing. It's not about your size, it's not about your color, it's not about your makeup, it's not about your weave or your hair or the lack of. It's not about your implants, it's about what God is doing behind the scene and what you're willing to let him do in your life. All right. That's right. You see, the first woman of color. Let me just stop right here and let you know, there's a difference. I had to tell one of my, my Caucasian friends, there's a difference in saying a colored person and a person of color. All right. I, I just had to let him know, and I said, don't, don't use colored man ever again. Uh -huh. What you need to, I mean, I knew he meant well. I knew he didn't have a racist bone in his body, but I just had to educate him. You don't call a man a colored man. But it's all right to call him a man of color. That's right. Well, because the dynamic in our neighborhood is different. When the moment I hear colored man or colored girl, I think about colored only fountains. I think about colored only restrooms. I think about white only fountains. I think, and the thing about water fountains and restrooms. They are all the same, coming from the same water, yeah, that's right. and discharging in the same gut. Right. How do you know that? Because I investigated. <laughs> I even looked at the pictures that they took during that time. And here I am as a little boy, I'm crawling. I'm trying to see if the water is coming from a different place. Uh -huh. And I realized that the same main line that comes in with the water, when it gets to the water fountain, one splits left and one splits right, but it's the same water. And the pipe that's coming to us has the same pipe that's coming to them, and the only difference is four inches. And then I investigated the drain pipe, Brother Whitlock. And when the drain pipe comes out, Brother Whitlock, I mean, I, I measured it, I, I, I flowed up under it, I, I looked at it, and they thought I was crazy, but I was measuring it. And it's, it's about two inches from the discharge of a white-only fountain and two inches from the discharge of the black-only fountain. And then they come together in a common collector and they both go out to the same sewage. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm telling you, I was an engineer at age two. I wanted to know. 
So it behooves us to know, it encourages us to know that we are drinking out the same water, we are all going into the same restroom, our stuff is discharging into the same sewage, and they make it a big deal out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So I had to inform him, don't, don't use, don't do that. I say, if you come to our church, you're going to get attacked by church folk. <laughs> the first time you say colored man, colored girl, or that gal, when I hear the word gal, it just... Yes, Lord. <laughs> I know what you mean. See, you, you, you've been in the city all your life, and you've yeah. never been around other people who, yeah. who down-talk you, and when, when grown African-American men would have to say yes, sir, to 12-year-old boys. Yes. Uh -huh. And they call our women gals even when they're 70 years old. I got a problem with that. I know that's right. Yes, Me too. And in the midst of it, we have to let our little life sit <laughs> In the midst of all that goes on around us. And see, what you understand is, God is blessing you when you become a token. God is moving and working behind the scene when you're the only one on the job. And I tell them, I've been a token all my life. And my token got me advances. My tokens got me paid. My tokens got me indoors. And all I had to do is show up dressed up. Show up, study up. Show up with my head up. And show up and I mess them up. Don't you know God has put something in you? The psalmist says in Psalm 139 that you are beautifully and wondrously made. Great are the handiworks of God. God knows who you are. God has dealt you the deal that he dealt you. He knows where you stay. He knows your address. He knows your Twitter account. God is not forgetting about you. Stop living in the midst of low self-esteem. If no one else builds you up, you build yourself up. I know that's right. And if no one else, if no one else encourages yeah. you, you yeah. encourage yeah. yourself. Yeah. The psalmist says, I, I was messed up, but I had to encourage myself. Yeah. Yeah. When you look at Psalm 107 and Psalm 103, yeah. you will find the psalmist talking to himself. Yeah. He said, the Bible says the psalmist encourages himself. He talks to himself. He says, come on, soul. Come on, let's get this together. Let's yeah. praise the Lord. Yeah. You ought to spend more time in praise than you spend in pity. That's right. Because when you spend more time in praise, God is getting the glory and God is using you to praise him. That's right. But you know, I, I used to have friends. I say used to have some friends. I used to have some friends. Brother Dixon, I used to have some friends that every time I saw them, they had a pity party going on. I said, they used to be my friends, Sister Davis. They're not my friends anymore because I have to tell them I'm not coming to your party today. I've already heard enough. I've already seen enough. And every time you show up, you walking in a pity party. Stop walking in the party and give God some praise. When people give God praise, there is hope. Paul in, I mean, Matthew ends this pericope uh, up here uh, right before he gets to the salt and the light. He ends by saying, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Give God praise for who he is. Yes. Give God honor for who he is. And then you, you can thank him for what he has already done. Right. I thank God for our young people. Man, we got some young folk that are talented. Yes, Lord. We yes. have some young people who really still blowing my mind. Right. We have young people who can speak on a college stage even yes. in junior high. Yes. And we got young people who, on a, on a, who, who is able to, to speak and from a high school stage as if they've been in, in careers all their lives. All right. That's right. Our young people are wise. Yeah. Our young people are living what would be for me in the 1980s a miracle. Yeah. You are never too old. Never, never. And it's never too late never. to start your impossible. You got to get a grip on that. You got to get a grip on the fact and see things that people who are teenagers think they're old, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, they, once they get a certain age as teenagers, they try to bump their age back down. We, we corrupt the children by when we get 52, tell them we're 25. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, I praise God yeah. and I thank God for every little second. All right, now. Yeah. 
And I'm glad to tell you, come April 15, 2022, I'll be 59 years old. I'm glad to tell you, I can't wear an afro anymore. I'm glad to tell you, I can't run a ball down like I used to because God is letting time go on for me. And I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. Stop wanting to be young when you're old. Stop wanting to dress like young folk. Talk like young folk. Be cool like young All folk. Right. Let me tell you, just deal with the generation God has put you in the midst of. Because if God had put me as an adult in civil rights, I wouldn't be here. But he made me and delivered me as a baby in the midst of the civil rights era. An era where I can see things change and I can see things make a difference. That's right. Say that. God has mountain movers right in this room. And I'm not talking about your age. I'm not, I don't care how old you are. I don't care what, what denomination you came from. I don't care uh, what your, your degree uh, status is. I do not care what color you are. I don't care what your nationality is. I don't care wh whether you were, were African American or Hispanic or Caucasian or other or Asian. It doesn't matter who you are. doesn't matter what your outer makeup is. God has planted a light in you. And we practice snuffing that light out. God want to use you. God wants to. You see, that's why I, I push people. Because I see something in them that they don't see in them. I, I, I went to Sister Henry this morning. I said, Sister Henry, are you scared me? No, I'm not scared. I said, Sister Henry, I thought you were scared. No, no, I'm not scared. I said, Sister Henry, can you do the scripture and prayer? Baby? Yeah, I can do. Now, for most folk, I would have been that ugly, bald-headed, no good for nothing, such as such, and started speaking in tongues and all that kind of carried on. But sometimes you need a coach to push you. Sometimes you need a music director to push you. Sometimes you need somebody who will hold you accountable for what you're going through and tell you, man, get up, man, get out of that pity party. But you never need friends like Joe friends. Yeah. You don't need those kind of friends. I've had them. I had, I, I've had those also who, who are so pious, who, who are so stuck on themselves that they can tell you what you did against God. But you need friends who will push you. When they see you getting lazy, they'll say you're getting lazy. When they see you misusing somebody else, they'll tell you you're misusing somebody else. God needs police officers mm -hmm. and law enforcers that will stop their friends from beating up on people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Who will stop them from doing that which is wrong because when you don't stop them, you're complicit. Mm -hmm. That means you might as well do it yourself. It means you ain't agree with it. Yeah. We have to understand, we need to surround our people yeah. with, surround ourselves with people who ain't gonna put up with our mess. You have mess in you. I think every Christian in the room can get a little hell done every night. Right. And they say they woke up on the side of bed. You went to sleep with that head. <laughs> you, you woke up with that head. You, you, you messed over people before you went to bed and you got up mad because they didn't bend to your will. Some folk in the family tell them, get away from her today. She, she, she's on it today. She's on it. She, she's on that rant today. Let me tell you, God expects us to be sharp with our spiritual walk every second of the day. Mm -hmm. If it goes your way or not, you got to be, be walking with God. Stop telling people a piece of your mind. You need all of your mind. I know that's right. Just keep waking up in the morning. You're going to try to go search for that mind. Right. It's okay. Jesus says, Blessed are those who put up with persecution. Yes, God. It's not going to always go your way. And when it doesn't go your way, don't get so upset all the time that you just throw a temper tantrum. Nancy Pelosi said, I got grandchildren. I know a temper tantrum when I see it. What she was saying is the former president ain't doing nothing but throwing a temper tantrum. Let me tell you, don't get caught up with temper tantrums when it doesn't go your way. Just let your light shine. And the text, he talks about the fact that you are the light of the world. 
This world is bright because you're on the scene. Mm -hmm. This world is not in darkness in your little corner of the earth because you're present. You are the light of the world. Watch what you say. Watch how you say it. Watch how you do it. And it comes with the maturity. If you handle things the same way as you have done before, guess what? You're not growing. I look at my life. And I look at the things I have handled. And I'm able to identify today. Sister Richard, I'm able to identify today how I messed up as a man. I'm able to look over my life. And you gotta be, you have to be, you have to be real with yourself. Don't, don't wait for somebody to come to tell you. Be real with yourself. And tell yourself your attitude think. Your attitude just flat speaking. Get it together. Take go to the bedroom, go to the restroom, go somewhere, talk to God, and then talk to yourself and say, you need to get it together. And be able to handle conflict better than you've been there. I said to you before, I said to you before, sometime my phone ring, I'm like, God, converse. I go into to prayer. I mean, I, I go into meditation. And sometimes I say, let, let me just call it back. Let, let me get myself together for this one. And then sometimes people call me, I walk out of meetings to get your phone call. Here is the difference. The one who is the light of the world will call you with those things that will be a blessing to you and be a blessing to others. The those who are walking in darkness that have a history of walking in darkness, there is going to be some mess every time I answer. And it doesn't matter if they start off the conversation well or not. Before it's over, by the way, the Bible says if you are a Christian, if you are saved, if you are born again, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. He says not only are you the light of the world, you light up the whole city. And if a city is sitting on a hill, you don't sit it in the valley. You got to let your let it shine. Let your light let it shine. Let it shine. He said, if you, a city sitting on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it on a basket. Then he goes on to say what we do with it. He says, but only candlestick. We light our lamps. We light our lights. We light our wick and we put it on a candlestick so the world can see it. Charles Barker says like this, I'm not a role model. I, I, I ain't no role model. Don't be looking at me as a role model. It is a person that lives around cop-outs. Because every person under my voice is a role model regardless of your age, regardless of your credentials, regardless of your occupation. Somebody's watching you. That's right. And 99% of the time, somebody want to be just like you. Mm, yeah. I, I, I grew up with Pastor Billy Ray Love, Pastor Allen, and Pastor R.L. Reed. I ain't going to have no part of preaching. <laughs> I saw what the people put them through. I said, I ain't doing that. Then I began to make, as I got older, I made deals with God. God, I'll be the videographer. God, I'll be the sound media person. Lord, I'll be the usher. Lord, I even sing in the choir and get embarrassed singing in the choir. Lord, I will, I will do whatever it takes. Lord, I park the cars. I, I will be outside directing traffic. Lord, I do whatever it takes. And I didn't know that God was preparing me to pass the new beginning church so I can know when you bring me some foolishness that that ain't the way it goes. Hospitality. I mean, I just I just laid it out for the Lord. I was serving folk in church, and, and people was just enjoying my service, and, and I was serving plates, and I would run and serve the preachers, and, and I would serve other people. Did not know that God was just letting me do my thing to prepare me for the new beginning church. Mm. My Lord. 
Your light must shine. You are different from anybody else. Even if you are a twin or triplet or quadruple, you are different from anybody else. Allow God to use your talent. Allow him to use your gift to shine. Let it shine. Don't put it under a bushel. Don't put it under a bucket. Let it shine. After today's message, I want everybody in this room to go home and say, Lord, what can I do to shine? What can I do to set a good example before those who are watching me? Because let me tell you, those who are not Christian are watching they're watching how you handle family death. They're watching how you handle uh, rules and regulations about COVID-19. They're watching how you handle instruction from your boss. They're watching how you handle your children. They're watching how your children handle you. They're looking for something. And you need to give them something. Country singer said it like this. Let's give them something to talk about. The singer says, let's give them something to talk about. If they're going to have anything to talk about, allow them to talk about the God you serve. Matthew Stafford, in his interview after the Super Bowl, kept giving glory to God. Craig Warner, after the Super Bowl, went from a truck driver to the winning Super Bowl quarterback, kept giving glory to God. We have to get to a point where God gets the glory in everything we do and everything we say. We have to get to a point where we take the lamp, we light the lamp, and don't put it on a basket. Allow God to use us for who we are. Let me tell you, Sister Nell, there's something in you that God wants to use, and you got to let it out. So, Sir Walters, uh, there's something in you that God is trying to use. You got to let it out. God wants to use you. He wants you to be a zipperer in what you do. He wants you to be the crown jewel in what you do. No one else can do what you do better than you can do. You just have to let God use you. Have a conversation with God. Then have a conversation with yourself and say, God, use me. And don't just don't just make it a slogan. Just don't don't just go to him like you've been to him before. Don't give him your New Year's resolution like you did at the beginning of the year that's already gone. <laughs> go to God and say, Lord, where am I messing up? Because there's a sin of omission, there's sin of commission. Yes. The sin of omission is when you, when you when you know what you ought to be doing and you just sitting there cool, calm. It's almost like if I see a dog attack somebody while I'm riding down the street, I just ride on by. I just omit it helping somebody. But before I get out, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be ready for the dog. Are you with me? And, and when you omit doing what is right, God is holding you accountable. When you do something that you know is wrong, it is sin of commission. You are committing sin openly. You know it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Say you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The world will point out that you told them you were a Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, they can use words, but you can't use those words. Mm -hmm. They can throw temper tantrums, but you can't throw temper tantrums. Because your life is too precious to set it on a bucket. On a basket, on a hedge bush. But the but on a light stand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Mm -hmm. Your house, your house. Anywhere you go, you take your house with you. You are letting a light shine and people are seeing you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why when I pray for children and babies, I say, Lord, bless them to be missionaries to those that they will see. Bless them to be lights to their co-workers, to their friends. And then young people, you just really got it going on. You can think fast. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. You can act fast. Mm -hmm. Babies come out of the womb with an iPad. Mm -hmm. It can tell you what to do with it. It takes me all day to figure out where to find the notification button. Mm -hmm. I'm beginning to think this went like it's pretty old too because last week we spent a whole 30 minutes. <laughs> We spent a whole 30 minutes, but 
brother was like, good to find one buddy. <laughs> Stop telling. <laughs> but when people are young, they have a lot to offer. Come on, don't sit down on it. Let your light shine. Use what God has given you. Because when you get older, you're going to wish you had it. Too many of us fall into woulda, coulda, shoulda. And when we fall into what a color should have, now we own a cane and we can't do it anymore. All right. Let me just tell you right here. When, when Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, he wasn't talking about that. All right, he wasn't. He was really talking about the fact that one church gave him an offering, a love offering, and, and another church refused to give him a love offering. So he talks to the church at Philippi and he tells the church of Philippi, don't worry about the offering, keep it if you want it. He says, as a matter of fact, I have worked for my money, and, and then there are some who are given to me, and I can do all things who, through Christ who, who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. okay. It had nothing to do with me running a hundred yard, a hundred meter dash. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with me getting this job. Mm -hmm. It has everything to do with if you choose not to help me, God will help me. Mm -hmm. God will help. He goes on to say, Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, he says, but you put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to everybody in the house. It gives light to everybody. Everybody see your light. It doesn't matter where you go, they know you're different. Doesn't matter how you act, they, they'll tell you in a heartbeat, you know, you, you, you can't be acting like that. I remember going to class reunion, I think it was class reunion number 25. And a bunch of guys got together around 12 o'clock at night. You know, we, when you go to class, you can stay up long as you want to get up whenever you get ready. Then you join the team whenever you want to. And, and it was about 12 midnight, and I, I saw a bunch of my classmates getting together, nothing but dudes. I said, hey, man, where y'all going? I'm so excited. I, I, I'm, I'm going to get to you know, hang out with the boys again like old time. And one of them said to me, preacher, you can't go. <laughs> what that said to me in that instance that my light has been shining. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to corrupt me by taking me where they had to go. And it's okay. It's okay not to make it. It's, it's okay not to be with them. It's all right to be on your own and by yourself. Yeah. At work, we used to go out every quarter and shoot pool. It's called team building. We would go to, I think this place is Hound Dog or a hound or something. They they played country western music because I was the only token there, so I had to listen to country western music. Mm -hmm. We go to the hound over on forty five, and and we would get around the pool table, and everybody had their favorite drinks. My drink was red because it was cranberry juice, <laughs> and I had cranberry juice and. And they knew that I was only drinking cranberry juice. So what they would do, they would come to me and ask me, so what you want today, cranberry juice? And then all of them go off that. I said, yes, sir, cranberry juice. And see, cranberry juice may have cost $2, where their drinks cost 5 $6. I know that's right. So after it was all over one day, I, I went to the manager. I said, well, I, I've been drinking and dr I'm getting ready to drive. I just want to let you know. He said, yeah, you ain't going to hit that thing. <laughs> He said, he, said, he said, won't anything get in your way? He said, but the rest of these, some going to find their way to them, and, and they're going to run over some if we don't get them a taxi cab home. It is okay, young people, to be all by yourself. It's okay not to be the one that do what they do. It's all right if you don't fit in. You were designed to fit in. It's okay to be the Sunday school student. It's all right to be the one that show up at church. It's okay to read your Bible on your lunch break. It's okay to be the only one. Because when their mama and their daddy pass away, they're going to have somebody to come to, and that person will be you. When they go through divorces, and it doesn't matter how badly they treat you, you get joy out of ministering to them because your light is shining bright. You give light to the whole house. You give light to the whole job. You give light to the whole group of people. You let your light shine. Verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men 
that they may see your good works. Mm. When you let your light shine, people will see it. All right. You don't have to flash your light. Mm. Too many people have gotten to a point where they think they got to butter themselves up to make them look better than somebody else. All right. Beware of the man, woman, boy, girl who tears down somebody else in order for themselves to look good. You don't have to tear down people. To, to, you don't have to bring up people's fault to make you look good. Let me just share with you. You just do good. The Bible says that people will see your good works. That's right. All right now. You don't have to even push yourself out there. And you don't have to make other folks look bad. The Bible says that people will see your good works. Mm -hmm. Look at the final part of that. And glorify your father. You see, the ultimate goal, anyway, is not that you look good. Hmm. The ultimate goal is that God be glorified. Right. In our musical instruments, our staff ought to be praising God that God will get the glory. All right. We ought to, and you know, you can tell, I'm, I'm just going to tell you point blank to the new beginning in the world. Our musicians are all underpaid, so they ain't playing for the money. It, it, it ought to, they ought to be playing for the glory of God. Right. And they said, well, well, some people say, well, preacher, money does help. I said, yeah, money answers all things. But if you play for money, you'll get fired because of money. Mm -hmm. That's right. yeah. What we have to understand, we don't usher and, and, and participate in first impressions ministry because they're not getting paid at all. But they're not doing it because of money. I'm so glad they have smiles on their faces. I'm so glad they can take instructions well. I'm so glad that they're looking out for the betterment of the church. I just praise God for it. The media ministry, they don't do it because they get money, because they don't receive money. It's all about glorifying God. And to God be the glory for what we are done. And when we give God the glory, we are blessed tremendously. And let me tell you, God can bless you other than in the ways of money. Yes, he, can. he blessed all of us this morning. Yeah. Allowed us to lay down in our bed last yeah. night. Yeah. And I thank God that the bed we laid on was not our cooling board. All right. I thank God that the sheets we rolled up yeah. in was not our winding sheet. Yeah. It's because God has kept us. He's blessed us. Yeah. And let me tell you, if you made your way to church, if you made your way to the broadcast, that means that God has left you in your right mind. And let me tell you, if your mind is going to be kept, it's God that's going to keep your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right about you, you, you that. think you're smart. Yeah. You think you can get things done. Yeah. Just, just keep waking up in the morning. Yeah. Back home there, say, just keep saying good morning to the slop job. Let me share something with you. If you keep waking up in the morning, you will understand real well, unless you are a fool, you will understand real well that it took God to bless you, and it's only God who can keep you. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, we can run, we can exercise all we want to, and, and guess what? Get people are dying. Yes, Lord. If people are having heart attacks, they don't have high blood pressure. Yes. People are dying from cancer who, who, are, who are out there doing their own thing that are eating right. They have a plant-based diet and they still die from cancer. If God can be, you can't be kept. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for keeping me. Thank God for blessing me. And he's blessing me so that he will get the glory. Heaven needs the glory. Don't you take credit. Don't you shine. Let it shine. Don't you make it shine. God needs the glory. Tell God when you find yourself slipping. Tell God, God, you keep the glory. When people say good things about you, to God be the glory. I thank God for the glory. He must keep the glory. That's what Jesus did. Over 2,000 years ago, mean men killed him. Mean men arrested him. Mean men hung him high. Mean men dropped him low. They killed him on the cross. On a skull hill called Calvary. They killed my Lord and my God. But he kept giving God the glory. He glorified God in the midst of it all. God needs the glory. They made him in a barber too. He stayed there. He understood the assignment. 
Do you understand the assignment? You need to understand your assignment. God has you here for the right assignment. God has you here so you can glorify God. Jesus stayed in the grave. He didn't get up after one day. He didn't get up after two days. But on the third day, early in the morning, he rose with all power. And heaven and earth in his head. He got up and God got the glory. When you're down and out, don't fight it out. Don't cuss it out. Don't fuss it out. Pray it out. So God can get the glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Is there anybody here who knows my Jesus? Who make a way out of anyone? Is there anybody here who knows that God? He's watching over us. He's keeping us. He's delivering us. Is there anybody here who has a way that you didn't make for yourself? Let it shine. God will see to it. Let men will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Is there anybody here? Who will celebrate to me? Anybody in here who will celebrate with me? We serve the awesome God. He is that evil. He is that evil. He will keep you. And he will bless you. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. He set the pattern for us. He set the example for us. He is the model for us. I thank God for Jesus. He is the righteous son of God. He's a righteous son of God. And one of these days, we're going to join him and we'll be forever with the Lord. Let God use you. Let your light shine. Let God bless you. Stop thinking about the troubles. The Hebrew writer declares that I know you're in trouble. He says, lay aside every weight that so easily beset you. And look to Jesus. What that says to me is, I glance at my problems. I know that they're there. I admit that they're there. I understand that they're there. I glance at them. But I look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah to the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. He's a way maker. But he made a way for me. He made a way for me. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't wait till you get it right. You'll never get it right. Let him bless you just like you are. If you're weary, if you're wounded, if you're sad, to Jesus, for he will make you glad. The door is open. If you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know him just as you are. Don't try to get it right. Come to Jesus. And let him get it right. If you want Jesus to be your Savior, and you want him to be your Lord, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We believe that you pray this prayer. You're now born again and when you die you're on your way to heaven. We thank God for who he is and what he's already done. And if there's somebody who's struggling, struggling
struggling with your commitment, struggling with your stuff, struggling with your life. I want to pray with you. Father God, we come now knowing that you are the great God. You're the master. You're the great king. You're the one who blesses us. Touch us now. Remind us of our filter. Our filthy thinking. Our filthy acting. Remind us of our filthy talking. And bless us, Lord, that we will walk with you. We commit to you, Lord. We rededicate. We recommit. We repent, Lord. We repent of how we treated you. Lord, make us whole again. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for delivering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. If you're looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention, the main attraction. Inbox us and let us know that you want to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. We will welcome you. Those of you who have prayed with us either to accept Christ as your Savior or to recommit to Him, inbox us and let us know that we can celebrate with you and rejoice with you. And we thank you for joining us here at the New Year Church. It is now offering time. It is now time to give to the Lord who tithes off of the sacrifice of If you need a humble Lord, please raise your hand and you will be served.
tithes or offering or sacrificial gifts by way of mail, you can mail them to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. If you give it by way of Zelle, we can receive your offering by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. That's lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Father God, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for every giver. We ask you to bless us, Father God. We ask you to bless our gifts. That we will continue to move forward and do kingdom building. Lord, we thank you now. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. So today is when you come and present our prayer request for today. you're the healer. We thank you, Lord, that you're the great physician. We thank you that you're the comforter. Now, Lord, we pray for these names who've been called. We also pray for Brother your mouths. We lift them all before you. Lord, touch and heal and strengthen and comfort. Bless, Father God, as only you can. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege again to come before you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see your victory on every hand. Now, Lord, we pray that you keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your mighty blessings. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join by saying, Amen. Let us stand and recite our mission and vision statement. We are you. Yes, he has. 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 